Welcome, rocket fans, to uh, Copenhagen Suborbitals, where uh, we, the last time you saw us, we had our burner test. And, um, well, we, uh, we ran into some issues. Let's just say it uh, as it is. We, um, we had our igniter system, which decided not to work anymore. And we had a very long discussion of how to continue the testing without the igniter system present, uh, which ended up, we ended up taking the grown up option and unfortunately scrubbing the rest of the weekend uh, because of the igniter box stopped. But we did have some partial success uh, as you saw, I, or maybe you didn't. We did actually manage to, to ignite the engine and to get it to start burning or get, get it to actually, you know, play as a rocket engine and not as a uh, low frequency pulse jet, which is very entertaining, but not really what we want. So we have, uh, we're starting to incorporate two changes at the moment. We are changing out the spark box plugs for these, which I cannot screw out at the moment, which is amazing, which are uh, glow plugs for diesel engines. So we're going to use glow plugs. They will eat around 300 watts of power each, concentrated in a small little point, which we hope is enough to um, ignite the flu, the fu fu fuel flow, which we hope that we can ignite the fuel flow inside of the engine. And um, yeah, and the other change we're doing is we are changing the oxygen side bell hose out to a direct hard mounted, I guess you could call a hard pipe tubing directly up to that flange over there. And that is to eliminate the amount of volume that's inside of the um, flexible hose. Uh, because there's a lot of extra volume that we don't need. And when you pour locks through the extra volume, the LOX needs to cool it down and it ends up boiling and it takes a long time for everything to get cold enough for the LOX to actually arrive at the engine. Um, so we're, we're taking that out and putting a more direct and a lot smaller volume uh, piping in. That's the two big changes we're doing, um, which we hope is enough. We're also uh, adding a um, temperature probe to the inlet, just so we that a bit easier can check if or when the LOX arrives. And um, yeah, we're gonna have a test here in the next weekend to hopefully see the engine run properly this time. So I also wanna talk a bit about what we saw at the test. So we saw two things at the test. We saw this pulse jetting uh, effect, which we have a couple of theories about why it does that. Um, one thing is that the igniters start the pulse jet event up basically. So they ignite the fuel, but then the fuel burns and pushes all of the um, liquids inside of the engine out and then you have the fire outside of the engine and then the fire ends up running back into the engine and then reignites, which can be, um, uh, which like that, that will create this noise or this like, pff, there's this popping effect that you see. Uh, the other thing is that the reason it keeps going on is because of our igniters. The igniters will start the event and then the pulse jetting will happen in and out of it. And that's, yeah, that's basically why I hear this popping. And, and you can try it at home, actually, if you want to. I'm not sure that you should, but you could do it. Uh, you can take a mason jar, drill a hole in the top, add a small amount of alcohol to it, and then ignite the top. And you should basically have built a pulse jet engine in your kitchen. Probably not ignited in the kitchen. Um, but that's the effect that we're seeing. Um, the other thing we saw was that the engine got extremely hot um, and we also saw the, um, like the liquid metal flowing out of the uh, nozzle. And so the heat we think is because that the engine 
ran really lean at the end and ended up really heating up the engine, or it's because the engine actually ended up running as a rocket engine and then heated up the inside uh, quicker than, than it would like. It wouldn't actually like permeate out to the outside before the test would, would stop. And when the test stopped, the metal had a chance of, of actually permeating the, um, the heat out and then it cooled back down again. And it might also be both. It might be that, that it ran lean at the end and then that added some heat to it. We don't really know at the moment. Um, so hopefully, and a way we can avoid the engine basically melting in on itself is to add more fuel to it. Um, because that cools the engine down, adding more fuel to it. So we think we ran a bit lean and we just didn't have enough um, propellants inside of it to actually cool it down. Yeah. Oh yeah, and the, um, and the liquid metal that was flowing out of it was our temperature probe and its um, accommodating heat shield that ended up uh, paying the ultimate price in the end. Because it was way into the engine and the engine got really hot slash lean, whatever, the probe ended up not having anywhere to throw the heat away and so it ended up just heating more and more up more and more up until it melted and then when it melted it shot out the nozzle as a liquid metal um, because at first we thought the uh, engine was self-igniting we're basically you know burning the metal we're using the metal as a fuel i don't think we did that um, if you ever uh, played around with an oxyacetylene torch, you can actually start, you know, cutting with the acetylene torch and then you can switch off the acetylene and you can actually keep cutting the steel because you're using the oxygen to burn away the, um, the metal. And I thought that was what was happening at the beginning, but I think we have decided that's not actually what happened to the rest of the engine body. Um, so yeah, for the next test, we're gonna add more fuel and um, a bit less oxygen. Hopefully the oxygen will come arrive earlier as uh, liquid oxygen and not as gaseous oxygen, which is the main reason we were changing out the piping. Yeah, happy days. So remember, next weekend, if this video does come out before the next weekend, we do have an engine test. Of course it will. Um, so follow us and uh, see what happens to this engine. I think I heard somebody in the stream call it the, what was it, the Burpinator? I think it was something like that. I don't know, is Burpinator a good name for this engine? We don't know. But maybe we should find some name for it. We don't really have a good name for it, other than the burner. If you want to see any of this hardware coming together in person, test some flown rockets, or try our space capsules out for size, come visit us. We run public tours every weekend, so just check our website for availability and book your visit. We really hope to see more of you here. Right, one last thing that I um, forgot to mention in my fairly long-winded rant, I say rant, long-winded uh, explanation of what happened last time, is um, a lot of the people in the chat live chat they uh, noticed that we had some blow by here at the back of the engine um well uh, we also uh, it never we didn't really um, address it when we um, were firing we basically we saw it we knew it was there and then we decided not to do anything about it mostly because the test was already running and yeah of course it would affect some of the results we would have gotten out of it but it wouldn't have you know a, a huge impact compared to stopping the test that was already going on and then fixing it and then starting back up again. But we do want to uh, to address the uh, the issue, and I think the the main thing we're going to do is we're going to you know put a um, what's it called? Not a bearing. It's it's called a seal in here. What is it? What's what's the name of it? O-ring. O -ring. Yes, we want to put an, uh, a proper O-ring in either, uh, um, you know, we, we can try Viton. Uh, let's see if we, we ended up making it into, well, Danes like brown sauce, but 
We hope we don't turn it into brown sauce. Um, or we might try with a uh, copper seal instead. And, you know, we, we tried without one last time, which was probably the main reason it was, we had some blow by back here. So the next, we're gonna try something different for the next test, which is, you know, to put in actual O-ring or seal in of some sort. Yeah? And again, remember, next weekend, we have a uh, live fire of this burpinator or burner again. The reason we're getting so close to reaching space on our speaker rocket is because all of our crowdfunding supporters. If you enjoy watching these insider videos on building a space program and you would like to become an even bigger part of it, you can help us out by going over to our website www.copsum.com and becoming a supporter with a small monthly or one-time donation. We all do this for free in our spare time, so you'd be surprised how much every little bit helps. And thank you if you feel like what we do and share is interesting.